Hi, my name is Michael Caduce, EMS educator at the EMS LRC. Today, we will be discussing supine spinal immobilization. First, I will ensure I am wearing proper body substance isolation, which includes gloves and eye protection. When I determine the patient has a possible spine injury, I will direct my partner to take manual stabilization. This means my partner will move the patient's head and neck into a neutral, inline position, preventing extension, flexion, or rotation of the patient's head. My partner will hold manual stabilization until told to release. I will then ensure the patient has a good pulse, motor response, and sensation in all four extremities. Next, I will properly size and apply a cervical collar to the patient's neck. I will then position the long spine board next to the patient, ensuring I have removed the straps from the patient side of the board. Rolling the patient onto his or her side may take additional team members to prevent lateral movement of the patient's spine. When ready, the person holding cervical immobilization will be in charge of when the patient is rolled. While the patient is on their side, I will palpate down the patient's spine, feeling for step off and listening for the patient to report tenderness or pain. The person holding cervical immobilization will again direct the patient being rolled back down onto the long spine board. The patient will need to be moved laterally to ensure he or she is secured to the center of the board. This will mean the person holding cervical immobilization directs the team in sliding the patient down and towards the center of the board and then back up so the patient's head is at the top of the board. I will then pad any void spaces and begin securing the long backboard straps around the patient. I will start by securing the patient's torso and hips to the long spine board followed by the patient's legs. The last region to be secured is the head. Following securing the head, the person holding manual stabilization can let go. If the patient cannot cross their arms over their chest, I may need to secure their upper extremities. Finally, I will reassess pulse, motor response, and sensation in the patient's extremities. Proper spinal immobilization after a traumatic injury can prevent future neurologic damage and is a skill important for the pre-hospital provider. 